Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tackle Share YouTube channel. I'm Alicia with the Tackle Share program and today we're going to be talking about how to set up one of these portable ice shelters of the hub style. Um, they're very quick and easy. Um, they, they're really great to set up with two people but you can also set them up on your own. There's some tips and tricks we have in this video to show you how to do it um, the easiest way possible and the safest way possible. All right, so we're gonna start off by setting up this hut. They come in these neat fancy uh, bags to keep them condensed. Um, and they have straps on them, which is easy to carry out, but I actually find that they're much easier just to pop in a sled and drag out to the ice. All right, so let's get to it. Now in the bag for your ice hut, you're gonna find lots of these. These are the pegs that you're gonna be using to peg down the corners of your ice hut. You'll notice it's got very, very aggressive threads on it, and that's what's really gonna grip into the ice and give it that hold. Some days when it's, it's nice like this, it's pretty easy to set up, but when you're setting one up on your own, it's, these are gonna come in so handy. Now you'll notice at each corner of your hub style hut, there's um, a nylon piece of fabric there with a grommet on it, and that's exactly where you're going to be putting that spike through, and you're gonna to wanna to get it right down into that, that ice there. I can feel it really digging into the ice there and if I tried to pull it out I really can't so I know it's in some good strong ice now for the convenience sake of doing this all the time and popping the shelters up and down and up and down as you move around or go out different days I highly suggest getting an adapter just like this it makes your world so much easier but it's totally doable by hand and you don't necessarily need all those extras so now you've got the one peg in the ice already and that's the one of course like I said before if the wind's coming this way that's the side that you want to get in first. It really will just prevent any problems you have. And the wind's kicking up now, so this is a really good example of uh, what it's like putting it up in the wind. So you're gonna unfold your hut like this. And then you're gonna go to the next available corner, which is this one here, and take your next peg. And make sure it's nice and tight when you pull it out. And even if I am using the drill, I like to get it in my hand at first, just to make sure I'm not really gonna be torquing the end of that bit too much. Get it in my hand, and then I can use my fancy little adapter. This one is meant for a set of pegs that does not have this yellow coating on it, so it doesn't quite fit the way I wish it would. However, it still works. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can really hear it crunching into that ice there. So I know it's really digging in deep. So to make it easier for myself, I've got the two corners in and they have these little tabs in the middle, which I'll show you in a second, that you're gonna use just to pop it out like that. And if you're forcing it, it's probably an indication that it's not uh, working right. They should be very, very easy to pop right out just like that. And now I'm gonna go around and pop up all four sides. It's really handy when you have somebody else around to help you pull up the sides, but putting those pegs down is really going to give you the advantage to get um, it sturdy, especially if you're setting up in a bit of the wind. So, right, the last thing we've got all four sides popped up. The last thing I need to do is jump in the hut and pop up the middle. Woo! Can you hear it really digging into the ice there? You can see I still have a bit of space there between that and ice. I'm going to keep going. You want to make sure it's down as securely as you can. Now, one more thing you want to remember when you're setting up your hut is you want to make sure that the doors are closed, especially if you find it's windy out, because any wind that kind of gets in there can get in and lift up your hut before you've had a chance to, to peg it down. And even if you have pegged it down, sometimes wind, strong gusts of wind can lift them up. So you want to make sure you leave the door closed while you're doing this. And I find sometimes with new huts or ones with really, you know, like these insulated ones that have a really tough fabric on the outside, sometimes you'll get to a point where it's really hard to actually pull it up and you can't pull it up past a certain point. And that's frustrating, especially if you've got kids waiting on you to get a hut set up. So um, my suggestion is just to release uh, the pressure that's on that zipper is just to push it in just a smidgen and it's easy to zip up just like that. All right, so next, um, if it is windy, you want to make sure you're taking... Um, you're pegging down every peg you have in that bag, I would suggest use it. So I have two more pegs and I'm going to peg down the side of it that is taking the brunt force of the wind right here. So I'm going to grab my last peg and peg it in 
right about here. So now you've got all of the, the whole tent is pegged down, it's ready to go. Without one last final thing, is you'll notice that they all have these skirts on them. And that's to obviously keep an airlock. And when you want to put your heater in there, it kind of keeps and it can really insulate and you use less propane, you're really going to have a much better time. It also prevents wind from getting up underneath the tent. So you're also going to go around. And if you're lucky and you have snow on the ice, that is great. Use that and just shovel it on. I like to keep a small condensed shovel with me. My son was nice enough to lend me his. Um, and just shovel the snow on there and do that all the way around your tent. So you give it that, you know, there's no gusts of wind coming underneath that can potentially lift up your tent as well as it keeps any warmth in and the cold out. Now, if you happen to be setting up on glare ice and you don't have any of that available, what you can do is you can just punch a few very shallow holes along the rim of your tent and that extra shavings of ice that you've collected from those holes is just a quick toss onto your tent. You obviously would only do that if the ice is very, very thick. You would never do that if it was, it was thin ice. Now you can see, you can't even really see any light other than the zipper at the other door there. Any light coming through, because I've got a nice seal on it there. And I will admit, I probably should have at the beginning went around the perimeter and scooped out from underneath so that the the skirt could get right on the ice. That is probably a hindsight note for later. So when you do go to set it up, um, you're gonna want to maybe just take a quick little scoop around the outside here so you can get down to the ice so that it's easier just to put the snow on top. Even being in the hut right now, it's much, much warmer. I don't even have a heater on in here. It is straight up just the hut, a shovel and me. And I think just even just the insulation from the, the wind on its own is quite a bit of heat that's um, all you really need. And But you can always upgrade to getting a heater, etc. Um, having said that, that's kind of why I'm showing you here about the, the floor is full of snow. And that may seem non-ideal, but as far as you know, the longevity of the time that you're out on the ice, if you're out fishing a lot, your feet can actually get fairly cold when you're touching that, that really hard ice. So the snow actually provides an insulation layer and I do enjoy having that there. It just gives me one extra, you know, an extra a bit of insulation so I can stay out a bit longer. It also um, helps prevent when you get, uh, if you do get a heater going on the ice, it gets quite slick and slippery and it's just a big watery mess. So I find having the snow layer here is also sometimes very helpful. Maybe if it is too much, you could skim it off a little bit. Like it is quite thick here. Whew. You could skim off a little bit and give yourself a bit, but I, um, I used to scoop all the snow off and now I find that leaving a little bit of snow there is actually very beneficial. Now you'll notice on my hut here, there's this yellow strap I have hanging around here. It's got a little loop on the one end and Velcro. Um, I think it's great that they've sewn it to the edge of the tent. That's the loop that you use when you've collapsed your tent and folded it back over. That is the loop that you use to bundle it together because in reality, nobody really puts your tent back in the bag after you've done it once. Maybe at the end of the season, I put mine back in the bag, but as I'm using it, I just leave it uh, bundled up in my sled. I bring it back to my house. I dry it out in the basement or the garage, and then I bundle it back up and put it in my sled. So I really don't use the bag much. This strap is really, really handy. And I like how uh, this tent I have is actually sewn to it. So I'm never going to, to lose it. So when you do fold up your tent, you're going to want to look for this a strap similar like this or just know where it is so that when you do go to collapse it you're not fumbling around in the blistering wind uh, trying to find a little strap to bundle it back up. So you've had your day on the ice and you're ready to pack it up and head home. This is the steps you're going to do when you go to pack up your tent. So you come inside and you're going to pull down the tent from the top. I like to start this way. It just makes folding the sides in a little bit easier. I also really like to zip up the side. See, the struggle is real. I am going to be pushing the side in anyways. So there we go. I just find it easier when you go to collapse the tent. If the door's flapping around, it's one extra, it's a really important piece of the tent that you don't want to get damaged. So put, zipping it back up and pushing it in when you're ready to collapse the tent is a good thing to do. Next, you're going to go around and obviously under your sides, poke each of the sides in under your pegs and pack it up. Now, when I'm going to remove the pegs, I'm still gonna leave the pegs that are closest to the windward side there, because of course, if I pop those up and the wind comes in, 
my tent will fold backwards. So you're gonna leave the windward side first, or last, and then you're gonna take the sides that were the last entry first. One more thing that I should point out is these, like I said before, these really, really aggressive spikes. Um, you wanna make sure that when you're putting them away, you're really careful with them because you don't want to be poking the inside of your tent with them. Um, these insulated tents have a little bit more resilience. One of the more thin fab, um, the fabric of the uninsulated ones are very, it's very taut. And if you puncture it, it's gonna make a big hole. So you wanna be careful um, of the business end of these spikes when you're putting them back in the bag or what, whatever you're, wherever you're putting them for storage. All right, so of course now because it's covered in snow, I'm gonna to wanna to shake that off as much as possible, but inevitably I'm gonna be taking it back to my house, setting it up in my basement so it's dry because you don't ever wanna store them wet. That's just not good for the fabric or any of the components. So I'm gonna try and shake off as much of the snow as possible. And then easy as pie, you just fold it back up. I made a special note of where that strap was when I was on the inside of the hut so I know where to look for it when I fold it all up. Like that. And just like any camping tent, they hardly ever fit back in the box. Um, especially when it's cold, the fabric is really, really wants to stay where it was originally, so you really kind of have to use some encouragement. So like I've said before, they're they're very affordable. I've picked up this one, I think, for maybe $400 uh, Canadian Tire. It is an insulated one. So they do, if it's an insulated uh, hut, they do cost a little bit more. But even some of the, the ones that are just like the thin, the non-insulated ones are still very affordable and very warm. The biggest thing is keeping the wind off of you. And even just a light breeze like today, you can see it's uh, a little light breeze. It does get a bit of a chill because it's coming off of the ice. Or coming off of the snow but as soon as you get inside a hut that's protecting you from the wind just a little bit it's very warm you you can go out and purchase a heater to have there if you're planning on being out there for a long period of time but if you're just starting out angling a hut on its own is very very warm especially ones that have a black canvas material I find that on sunny days the sun can really heat them up all on their own so they're very affordable easy to set up uh, especially if you're doing it the right way so make sure that if you're getting a hut it's something that's meant for you this one is a two or three person hut that I find usually they have the ratings and it's usually take the one person out of there and that's the actual comfort level I would say um, but I've had my my kids in there fishing with this one it's um, what is it six and a half by six and a half feet so it's about a 45 square feet of um, fishing area and I think that's all that you really need if you're just starting out you can get larger ones if you have bigger family but at the same time if you're out fishing and myself it, uh, as an example, is I don't sit in a hut all day. I punch holes all over the ice and I'm walking. For me, the hut is just a place for my kids to stay warm and me to come back and, and warm up periodically. I don't stay in there all day. Um, I do like to, you know, walk around and punch holes in different locations. So um, don't necessarily think you need to all huddle in one little spot. It's also a better strategy to be out fishing across the lake and just different locations until you know the structure and you know where you're fishing. So. All right, so I think this one, it weighed about 36 pounds. I just throw it in my sled that you can see right over there. Throw it in my sled and I can drag it around fairly easily. So I would highly suggest if you're just starting out, um, one of these hub style uh, tents are really quick and easy to pop up. You can get other huts that have sleds attached to them at the bottom. Sometimes I just find they're a bit harder to stick, uh, to put into a van or a vehicle that you have because I just have a mommy van and I don't have a lot of room once I got all my kids in the seats. So um, these collapsible tents are great to start out. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this channel. I'm out of breath. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and tap the notifications so you know when we have new content coming. See you next time. That was a lot of work.